All right, let's start. start. So uh, uh, thank you guys for attending uh, this session. So uh, today's topic is about you know Green Palm database on uh, HDFS. So firstly, uh, I will give uh, uh, self-introduction about myself. So this is Lei from uh, Green Plum, you know, uh, development team. And uh, currently, I, I was working on uh, uh, this project. And uh, so firstly, I will give uh, you know, a brief introduction about uh, you know, uh, the background of this project. And uh, then uh, I will give a uh, introduction about the architecture of uh, Go, that is GPTV on HDFS, and then uh, the features. And finally, I will give a performance study, you know, uh, results uh, about uh, this. So uh, first of all, you know, uh, the whole, you know, uh, product uh, uh, portfolio of, you know, Green Plum is uh, UAP, you know, that is United, you know, uh, analytic platform. Actually, that is, uh, you know, a great platform, you know, for co-processing of, you know, structured data and uh, unstructured data. So uh, in the bottom layer, it's, you know, there are two components. One is Green Plum database. It's, uh, you know, massive pa parallel database. And it's, it is very extreme, extremely scalable, you know, MPB database. And the other is Green Plum, you know, Hadoop release. And uh, uh, in the you know uh, medium layer, uh, you know we support you know third party you know tools, and we also have Green Plum you know chorus, which is you know used to you know for users to collaborate and explore and visualizing the data for you know for end users, and we also unify the users you know in the, this platform for you know their whole you know analytic works. So this is the portfolio we can see from the bottom layer. We have two you know main components: GBDB and uh, Hadoop. So how we combine this together? Actually, this is uh, you know the motivation of this project. And uh, so, uh, firstly, I will show you some you know use cases of you know Go. And uh, there are a lot of you know customers you know who are using you know Hadoop and uh, Green Plum database and Hadoop. And they often ask you know some questions about you know. Currently, uh, we are using you know GBDB, and uh, we have GBDB have its you know local storage, and we are using you know Hadoop. You know it has a distributed file system. You know the data is stored in uh, the data is stored in HDFS. So uh, you know we need to you know manage you know two you know two uh, you know storage pools. So it is you know not very convenient, and it increases you know operational cost for you know. Uh, developers and you know they are you know uh, IT you know uh, staff. So how to you know you know it's much easier to manage scale you know uh, you know uh, to you, if you only you know uh, focus on you know one storage pool. And the other use case you know for custom you know a lot of customers is also using edge base for especially for Web 2.0 you know companies they use edge base for their you know online data. Only a, a transaction, uh, you know, like you know, query processing, and so currently, edge base is based on you know HDFS like you know distributed file system. So uh, uh, customers often ask, you know, whether GBDB can run, run you know, against such kind of storage system. So our you know answer is yes, we can you can, we can run it, and actually the performance is also very good, as good as you know. GPDB, you know, GPDB's performance. So the, uh, the, the, fine, the last, you know, use case, you know, is to, you know, support, you know, various kind of storage system, such as, you know, uh, EMC has, you know, EMC is, you know, main business is uh, a lot of business is about storage. It has, you know, Isilon, Atmos, and a lot of other, you know, storage systems. How to integrate, you know, Isilon, how to support Isilon, how to support Atmos, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, in our uh, Green Plum database, this is, uh, you know, this is also one uh, use case for, you know, Go. All right, uh, this slide shows the, you know, the main architecture of, you know, uh, Go. Uh, in the bottom layer is, you know, is uh, HDFS. You can see that, you know, uh, we have name node, dead node, and, uh, and in the, uh, uh, you know, in the top part is Green Plum database. 
we uh, for Green Plum database is uh, uh, is uh, you know uh, MPV database and it's use a kind of mass slave architecture. Uh, in the top uh, in the top of the figure is uh, you know we have we, we support you know uh, you know it's multi host. It has also has a standby multi -host, master host, and uh, in the middle layer there are a lot of segment host segment servers. And on each segment server, there are a lot of you know segment database running you know on that on that server. And uh, here for Go, you know, uh, when when uh, GPDB want to you know to store some data on you know on storage, then then it will write you know to HDFS. You know we changed you know a lot of you know uh, 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 Green Plum database you know storage storage engine code to make it happen. You know. To write the data to you know HDFS to read the data and to and from HDFS, so this is a basic you know architecture, and uh, okay, this is uh, you know the features we currently support, and uh, we support a pluggable you know storage layer. Actually, if your new new file system, if it can support you know HDFS you know semantics, then you know the, the file your file system can be you know supported you know. Uh, as a, you know, GPDB, you know, uh, table storage. And uh, for example, uh, uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, artificial file system, you know, which already support, you know, HDFS, you know, semantics, such as, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Isolon, such as, you know, uh, MAPR, you know, file system, and a lot of other, you know, uh, uh, file systems. We can also support, you know, attribute file space. And in a Green Plum database, you know, we can, you can, Create a file space, you know, on you know on local disk. Previously, you can, uh, uh, it can only be on local disk. But now you can create a file space on you know HDFS. We can also support you know a lot of you know uh, 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 customized uh, uh, attributes against the file space. For example, you can set some, uh, you can set that this table can be you know stored in you know uh, you know three replicas. So for some important data, if you you some data you ask only on a temporary, you can set, you know, the replica to only one. So this, this gives a lot of flexibility for, you know, for users to manage their data. And the other is, uh, you know, HDFS file spaces, are, you know, are natively supported in, you know, uh, Green Plum database uh, 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 kernel engine. And we, we have also full chain setting support. This is, you know, currently Hadoop stack cannot, you know, support. This is very important for a lot of customers. You know, if you if you ever use HBase or a lot lot of other Hadoop systems, you will find that you will, you know, you are facing a lot of you know uh, consistent issues. It is because you know it does not support transaction. So if you load something, then the the transaction the load operation failed. Then you need to sometimes you you need to zoom in in database uh, you know in that in database you know you mean you need to roll back the transaction. But in Hadoop, you cannot do that since you need to, you know, for example, you need to delete some files from HDFS by you know, manually. This is, this is very difficult for users to, you know, to do, you know, systems should do. And uh, we, uh, in order to support, you know, for transaction, uh, uh, for Go, we, uh, uh, you know, we changed HDFS uh, in some part. For example, we added, uh, you know, HDFS truncate to, you know, uh, HDFS. Then, uh, uh, after a while, I will uh, introduce, you know, how we, you know, uh, change this. And we also support, you know, HDFS native C interface. You know, uh, HDFS currently uh, only have, uh, it has a C library. It is a GNI based, but it introduces a lot of performance penalties. Later, I will show you what's the, you know, what's the drawback of current solution and what, uh, how I address these issues. And we also support all of the current, all of current, you know, GPDB functionalities, for example, fault tolerance, and a lot of other, you know, uh, good functionality for users. All right. All right. Uh, let's go into, you know, uh, uh, some, you know, uh, detailed features. First, first of all, it's a pluggable storage layer, and this is a, a user interface. In order to you know plug uh, you know a distributed file system into you know Go, it is very simple. You only need to you know create some functions. 
actually uh, this uh, you know syntax you know follows the GPDB or Postgres you know create a function syntax. You only need to create some function. For example, you open a file, you need to create an open function. You want to close file and seek file and uh, you know uh, truncate. You need to create such kind of functions. You need to define a, a set of functions. These functions are Im implemented in your you know shared libraries, and then you need to create a file system. Uh, when you create a file system, uh, then in GBDB catalog, we will record this. And, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, you actually, you, you uh, correlate, connect to your, your connect function. You correlate our internal open to your open function. Then you can use this file system, uh, you know, as our, you know, relation table storage. This is, this is very, you know, easy to use. For after you create some, you know, uh, file systems, then you can create files, file space against this file, si file system. For example, you, if you want to, uh, you know, plug in Arsalon, you know, uh, then you can create a file system. Then you can create, you know, uh, a file space on Arsalon. This is very convenient. And uh, so for file space, you know, uh, we support, you know, attribute of file space. The first uh, uh, attributes we support is you can specify the number of replicas for your table in the table space, uh, in the file space. And uh, you can specify where mirroring is, you know, supported for, you know, for table stored in the uh, uh, file space. Actually, uh, for HDFS, you know, it store, you know, data blocks on, uh, you know, three data blocks. By default, it can, it support three data blocks, uh, three, you know, replicas for each data block. And, uh, you know, uh, Green Plum database also support, you know, kind of mirroring. It has prim each primary has a mirror on another, you know, another server. You can specify you whether you want to, you know, use Green Plum mirroring or, HD or HDFS, you know, uh, replication to, to do the fault tolerance. Those are okay. So this uh, gives users such uh, flexibility to, to do that. And you can also, you know, specify a, a lot of other attributes. And uh, the attributes can be extended. And uh, this is an uh, example SQL to you know create a file space against you know a HDFS file system. You uh, this is a very simple term uh, uh, SQL statement. In uh, this statement, we can find that you can you uh, you you specify you know three you know URLs. Both, uh, they are all on you know HDFS you know, and you can specify you know uh, attributes you uh, with uh, with subclass number of replicas and the mirroring is open or not. And this, okay, this is an example SQL. And uh, so for transaction support, you know, uh, you may, you know, uh, maybe you are, you know, very curious, uh, you know, how we, you know, e implement, you know, transaction, transaction against, uh, you know, uh, HDFS, such, uh, you know, uh, for Hadoop, it does not support any, you know, transaction semantic. So how we support it in a large scale, you know, cluster. So I will, I will give, uh, first give you some uh, use cases. Then uh, uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, briefly uh, describe, you know, how we implement it. And uh, for example, if you uh, load something, you know, then actually uh, if, you know, users often, you know, uh, especially, you know, uh, if you are doing some, you know, uh, uh, investigative, you know, uh, uh, you know, analytics. Then you can, you want to, you know, try to load something, then analyze the data set, and uh, you know, try to get the results. If you try to load the data, but finally, but in the middle time, maybe you find that we do not need to load it again. Maybe load, you know, may take hours to complete. So in the middle time, you want to cancel it. It's a very, you know, frequent uh, operation for by customers. When you cancel it, then, you know, if uh, if, you know, uh, we cannot abort the transaction, then there will be some garbage, you know, left in HDFS. So, but in uh, current HDFS, you know, it support a pen, but it does not support any, you know, truncate like and uh, overwrite, you know, semantic for, you know, for data. It, if it is right in, so then you can only delete it, and then you can re-add, re-append, or re, you know, recreate a file. It is very time consuming, especially for large data, you know, loading. And a lot, so, so we come up with, you know, uh, a lot of options to implement this. Maybe the first option, you know, is, is to, you know, 
load that into a separate HDFL file. Actually, a lot of Hadoop like system, you know, use this kind of method. You know, when something fails or when you when you you know uh, load some you know data you know into uh, the file system, then you use a separate file to do that. But finally, you know, you will end up with you know unlimited number of you know uh, files, especially if you want to support it, some interactive you know analytical queries, especially some small queries, then you know, uh, you will, a lot of about the transactions will, you know, make the uh, number of files unlimited. So this is, you know, what we do not want. And this, the second option is, you know, we use some metadata to record, you know, well is the garbage data. So later we can, you know, run vacuum against this. But, you know, it need to be some, you know, huge changes to our, you know, GBDB code. And actually this, this is not, not, not a natural, you know, Design, why? So this actually chunk had a lot, uh, chunk had and and even a, a lot of other you know uh, advanced functionality should be you know in storage layer. It should be not you know in the upper layer. It's not upper layer is, is business. It should be in the storage layer. So we implemented you know actually every chunk had to support such kind such kind of you know transactions. Okay. Oh, this laptop is. Uh, Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, then uh, another issue is about you know the you know the concurrent support for you know HDFS. You know uh, if you ever used you know HDFS, you must know that HDFS support you know a Java interface and also you know a C you know uh, interface. The C interface is based on GNI. So I will give an example about why GNI does not work. So. Uh, for Go, you know, we need to support a lot of, you know, a large number of concurrent queries. So if we, uh, so if we, uh, you know, uh, install, you know, six segment, you know, on each segment host, you can uh, then, you know, if we want to support only, you know, 50, you know, concurrent queries, concurrent analytical, you know, large queries, maybe each query will start some, you know, may have, you know, 12 or more, you know, processes that do some, you know, scan, uh, you know, against the HDFS. Actually, this is quite a like, you know, MapReduce. But MapReduce, it also use, you know, uh, it studied a lot of mappers and reduces on, you know, on each node. In, you know, in Hadoop, you know, when, uh, you know, uh, you know, in previous, you know, the, the releases before next gen, so it uses slots to manage the resources on the, you know, on, on the single node. And it has, you know, it can, so it, it can also, you can, you, you can only stop some limited number of you know, mappers or reducers on each node. So this, uh, for Go, it, 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 has, it is similar. So if we have a lot of processes you know, studied on, you know, on each node, then this process is needed to you know, parallel you know, to access the, the HDFS. So if each, you know, each process start you know, a C client, you know, GBDB is coded in C. Uh, but you know, it, it, it can only use you know, the C, C library to do that. So, if if each you know uh, process start a JVM to do that, then, for example, if each JVM use you know 500 megabytes, then the JVMs you know will, will consume you know about you know 300 gigabytes memory for on um, on each node. It's it's not feasible, right? So, we should store this. Then you know we. Uh, Actually, we provide a lot of options to implement this. Finally, I will show that. Uh, finally, well, I, I will show. Uh, I, I, I will first show the several options. Then I will show the. You know, fi finally, I will show the performance results. And uh, the first option is, you know, HDF fields. You can use fields like, you know. Uh, to you know, fields support. If you use fields, you can use HDFS like you, like you know local file system. Then you can you know GBD processes can access that. Then, but fields you know fields you know introduce a lot of performance overhead and the scalability is not you know uh, you know it, it's, it is not verified yet. And uh, the second option is is use you know to implement a web HDFS you know based. Uh, C client, 
uh, Web HDF is based on HTTP protocol, and uh, actually we uh, implemented this. Finally, we found that you know use this kind of proxy, you know, based method, it introduced a lot of performance overhead, and uh, you know, and uh, Web HDFS is you know uh, uh, when you use Web HDFS, it also introduces a lot of potential issues. But Web Web HDFS may have some bugs, may you know have some introduce a lot of issues. How you you know solve this and continually to support this, it is very difficult. And so finally, we used the option three. Actually, we implement a C RPC interface that directly, you know, communicate with uh, name node and data node. You know, but this also has some limitations. For example, if the RPC protocol change and the maybe uh, the the, uh, the client side, you know, uh, also need to be changed. But currently, we uh, but the performance is really good for this kind of. Uh, RPC, native RPC interface. And uh, so, uh, okay. Next, I will introduce how we, you know, uh, support HDFS truncate. This is a, a API we uh, supported. And uh, truncate, uh, so uh, it has several, you know, uh, you know two, pre uh, two arguments. The first is the, the, the path. And the second is the, the, the target length. Then the semantics is uh, you know quite interesting. And you know HDF has currently only support you know one single writer, right? And we uh, for uh, chunk and uh, one single appender. So for truncator we keep this, and we we only support you know one truncator. And uh, users you know can only uh, and we also uh, uh, require that users can only truncate on closed files. To you know, to avoid an unnecessary you know complexity you know for chunk it at open files, and uh, it, it works. It, actually, it works for you know for up layer applications. For example, if you want to you know uh, uh, about a transaction, then you can first close a the file, then you can chunk it the file. So it's fine for up layer applications. And the second, the second is you know HDF chunk it will you know guarantee the atomicity of the operation. You know, for database-like operations, a very important you know things the you know is the transaction properties, atomicity. If we want to chunk at something, then it either succeed or, or fail. So we do not we, we do not want you know it's it is left in an undetermined state. It's you know it's it will you know uh, give you uh, you know left you you know leave users you know you know uh, you know a lot of complex issues. And so we support the atomicity of the uh, truncate operation. And uh, for concurrent readers, we support you know uh, concurrent you know readers when you know we do some truncate. And uh, so uh, if the concurrent you know for concurrent we only support a weak you know se semantic you know concurrent if we you know if our truncate uh, you know operation is uh, you know is uh, unprocessed then. Use then the clean side, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, code may catch some, you know, location information, location information of some uh, HDFS blocks. Then, then the you know uh, when we truncate the blocks, then the the client side may, may access the you know the the blocks, you know, access you know or that will be truncated by the trunc truncate operation. So currently we allow this operation. We we allow this. So, but so since since you know on the upper layer we can control this, since we can if the transaction is about it, so there are some garbage data in that. So when we do truncate, we can you know limit it in the upper layer. So it's also fine for upper layer applications. Okay, actually we uh, fully uh, you know uh, implemented the uh, HDFS truncate on our system, in our system. So this is uh, uh, how we implement that, and uh, so the idea is uh, you know very straightforward. You can see the discussions on the Jira, and uh, for the first step, you know we guessed the uh, leases of the to be truncated the file. Then uh, uh, if the truncate if uh, at the block boundary, then you know we only need to some delete some uh, tail blocks uh, as an you know atomic operation at the nav node. 
And if a truncate is not at a block, block boundary, then we need to copy the last block of the result file you know, to a temporary file. And otherwise, uh, and, uh, and finally, we need to remove the tail blocks of the files. And finally, we concat the, uh, you know, uh, the temporary file and, the, and the, you know, the, the left file. And, the result fi and finally, we get the result file. And, and uh, then we need to re release the, the, the list of the file. You know, this, it looks like it's very simple, but the code, you know, you, ne you need to consider a lot of recovery and when the, trans when the chunk is failed, but it's, it's also not very straightforward in the code implementation. Okay, finally, uh, we uh, will show some, you know, experimental results. You know, currently uh, it's only in our development phase, not in production phase. So we only test it in our, you know, development servers. It's a, uh, you know, 50, you know, uh, 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 segment servers and one, you know, master server. And uh, for CPU, we use uh, Intel CPU and with uh, two six core, you know, two six cores. And the memory we have uh, uh, 48 gigabytes and for storage and for each node, we have 12, you know, SAS disks and for, uh, uh, network, we use, uh, you know, uh, 10 gig, you know, NICs on each node. And uh, we also use 10 gig switch network. And for software, and uh, currently G uh, GOH is based on, you know, the development uh, uh, goal is based on, you know, GPDB uh, 2.4.2 uh, release and Hadoop 2 uh, alpha, you know, alpha version. And uh, we also compare, you know, goal with Hive. And uh, Hive, we use uh, uh, .9. And for uh, HDFS, we use uh, uh, 0.20. So uh, for how comparison, we you know, uh, you know, for uh, Gaul, we do not need to do a lot of tuning work. You know, you just install it and then run it. Run it is fine. But for how, you know, if you do not you know tune it, maybe the performance maybe you know, uh, you know may you know may uh, the performance uh, you know will show a great difference. So we intentionally tune the hive, you know, for, for performance to, you know, for fairness. And we tune the MapReduce, you know, parameters, such as we tune the, you know, the number of mappers and the number of reducers can be studied on each node. We tune the HDFS block size, and we make the hive, you know, runs, you know, as, as fast as possible, so. Okay, this some, you know, results. For TPCH, this is uh, the first figure shows the results on you know 50 nodes, 50 nodes, and uh, for TPCH scale you know uh, for 100 actually it's a uh, data set uh, uh, about 400 gigabytes. It's a uh, you know relative large you know data set, and we can see that you know the red bus uh, half uh, you can almost you can. You you can you know you almost cannot see you know where is you, where is goal so so goal is you know very you know efficient at, at such kind of you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, analytic queries this for TBCH you know is a kind of analytic queries if you you know if you uh, you know uh, you know use some you know transaction like you know uh, queries for example you simply insert one, one record or you simply you know retrieve one record one one tuple from the relation then the performance should be you know maybe thousands of times faster than the than hive and for tbch like queries you know for in this scale you know it's it's about it's it's about you know on average it's about 30 times faster and uh, on some queries it's about 100 times faster and so uh, this is a result on you know a relatively uh, small you know cluster. Okay, the next slide shows. You may wonder, you know, if the scale is increased, so what will happen? <coughs> okay, this is a result for one terabyte, you know, TBCH test, and this is a fifty nodes. Okay, you can see that you know. You still cannot see, you know, GBDB on, almost cannot see GBDB on this figure. So uh, actually GBDB, you know, scales, you know, linearly, you know, when you increase the, 
the, the, the number of nodes in a cluster. It is, it, it, you know, it is, you know, it is, uh, uh, you know, it's well known that GPDB can scale to, you know, thousands of nodes. And for, you can see here, you know, how, for example, the, it is not, you know, uh, to compare, you can find that, you know, for some queries, it shows some, you know, uh, abnormal, you know, uh, behaviors. It's, you know, it needs, you know, several, um, a lot of hours to finish. But for GBDB, it may only need, you know, you know, less than 100 seconds to, to do that. So, all right. All right, actually this is only, you know, preliminary, you know, testing results. Actually, for, for the next step, you know, we need, we, we will, you know, in Q3, we will test it in, you know, verify this in uh, our, you know, work ban working ba workbench on, you know, one sovereign you know, node to test it, you know, the, to further compare the performance. All right. All right, this is the, uh, you know, last slides. Okay. And uh, so, uh, any questions? Uh, please. Is your C based client open source? Uh, yeah, we, we use the C-based, uh, you know, client we developed. So uh, you can find here we have uh, several options, right? And uh, oh, sorry. Oh, this, this laptop is not, you know, difficult to use, so it's not mine. So. <laughs> Very slow. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I will explain by you know. So uh, we have three options. The first one is, you know, use fields. This also, you know, CBAS. And the second one is to use, you know. No, I, I, I asked whether the source is available. The source is available. Is it open source? Uh, currently, it's, it's in development phase, so uh, it's not open source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In future, it, it will be too, yeah. So, sorry, let me repeat your question. You, you, know, you mean the performance comparison between you know, the, 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 C the, the C client, right? Okay. The C client versus the SPFS. Okay. Actually, uh, for web HDFS, um, it is by about, you know, uh, for if you use native, for, you know, for a lot of concurrent cases, it, can, it may introduce about, about two or two, three times you know, performance. Uh, actually, this is a good question. So, uh, for Go, actually, we use native Greenplum database format. It's not currently it's not open, and uh, you know we store the files on the HDR, as HDR file. And uh, but you you know uh, you you have a lot of methods to access that. For example, you can use external table to you know to access the you know. The, the data stored in you know GPDB by by MapReduce or a lot of other applications, you can you know parallel access the tables in in Greenplum database. So, you know Greenplum database has you know the you know the fastest loading performance for you know uh, you know uh, you know if you want to extract the data from GPDB or store data in GPDB, it's very very fast. Any other questions? Okay, please.
is it possible to use uh, GreenPlan DB with Mapper file system? Yeah, we can. So uh, actually, we support uh, you know pluggable story layer, right? Then if you if uh, any file system you can it can support you know HDFS interface, then we can support it. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, thank you guys. Thank you.